Hello everybody, I hope you're doing fantastic. We're going to look at every chart pattern you need to know today. And in this video, you're gonna learn the key bullish chart patterns, the key bearish chart patterns. We're gonna look at continuation patterns, bilateral patterns, consolidation patterns, reversal patterns, also the exit and entry. So this video, if you stick through to the end, will show you those absolutely tremendously great chart patterns that you really want to know the ones that have been trialed and tested the most often and really it's going to help you surf through the volatile waves of cryptocurrency and other markets and you're going to really be able to apply this strategy and the understanding of these chart patterns to your own journey in cryptocurrency and you're going to realize also how easy that it actually is to apply these so what are the chart patterns well Chart patterns allow us to make decisions as to where the price could potentially be headed. It provides us a framework and analysis between the bears and the bulls. Essentially, it's a shape within the price action. So it could be a triangle, a rectangle, it could even be a diamond to help determine an asset securities, you know, next particular move. It could be a downtrend into an uptrend. It could be a reversal, something like that. So chart patterns can help us determine breakouts or corrections in the markets. They can also be used to help us determine and forecast a short term or long term trend, guys. And more data and research can lead to greater results and potential success. So we want to apply as many tools as possible into our journey to help us forecast and make the right decisions for our own personal growth and gains in the long run. So the types of chart patterns that we're going to be looking at, we've got continuation patterns, so they give continuation signals which reflect an ongoing trend. We've got reversal patterns. These types of patterns usually display reversal signals. And we also have bilateral patterns. So these are pretty uncertain. They're quite um, bipolar almost, I like to call them. And the volatility usually is around when these sort of patterns do exist. So yeah, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe as well, guys. I'm very much welcome you to do that. And let's crack on. So first things first, we've got the head and shoulders pattern. This is a pattern with one large peak and two smaller peaks on either side of it. As you can see, we've got the head right here, followed by a left shoulder and also a right shoulder. Now it's important that you do have a neckline, which is completely horizontal. This would be your support line right here. So this is a bearish pattern. It's also a bearish reversal. So you may have had a good uptrend and then you went into a shoulder, into a head, into a shoulder, and then you lose this support at the neckline. And that's when you see a downtrend potentially begin. So we can see in 93% of the cases, the exit from the head and shoulders pattern is bearish. In 63% of the cases, the price reaches the objective of the head and shoulders. So what that means is if you take the neckline and the head, if you use a trend line or an info line or a measuring tool to get the depth of that particular head shape, then you can use that against the neckline and you can calculate yourself a price objective there, which is a technical target. We also have on the other hand, the evil twin. We have the inverse head and shoulders. This is a bullish pattern, however, so it's just like the normal head and shoulders, except we've flipped everything around. So you can see we've got the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, we've got the neckline here. And in this case, it's resistance. So what we can also see is this is the depth that we were just talking about. We measure the head to the neckline. This gives you the technical target. And then you use that against the neckline to find out what the, the bullish price or technical target or objective would be. As you can see, we broke out the resistance. We retested it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times of resistance retest. And then we broke through and then the price, boom, shoots up. So this is a bullish pattern which constitutes of multiple attempts at breaking the resistance before I pump to the upside, AKA a bullish reversal pattern. 98% of the cases, the exit from the inverted head and shoulders pattern is bullish. 74% of cases, we hit the price target right there. And 97% 97 of the cases, the bullish movement continues at the break of the neckline. So we see continuation to the upside after this particular thing. Um, but in, you know, in half the cases, you must also consider that we do get a retest on the neckline as a support. So you go up and you come back down, you retest the resistance, which is flipped in support. And then, you know, you have to kind of wait for the bounce there to get a confirmation that it is not gonna go back through the support. So yeah, that's the head and shoulders. Another really, really good one. Very popular pattern is a double top. This is usually when an asset hits peak through euphoria, thrill and greed. We 
you know, we come up, we get that big impulse, then we get our retracement, then we get another impulse where we re we attempt, we re-attempt, shall I say, to break through the prior local high, aka the resistance that we drew, and then what happens is you actually fall back down to the support level here. You get the neckline by joining up the retracement between the two swing highs. So you have the swing high, you have the retracement, you have the swing high. This will be your neckline. So you just literally join that up by the beginning of the mar so it looks it looks like an m shape guys and this is where potentially you're going to enter a short position when you break this neckline and that's where you see the price rally down so this one here is a pattern where in 75 percent of cases the movement is bearish after a double top and in 83 percent of the cases the price breaks the double top patterns neckline so most of the time you do break this neckline um very very bearish pattern if you see this get your bear gloves on because literally the price is usually going to fall and break support here on the other hand we have the dull bottom now this is a bullish pattern one of my actual favorites so both of these patterns are bullish reversal patterns or bullish or bearish reversal patterns honestly this is one of my favorites it's a very obvious w shape just like that and the neckline is measured across the center of the double bottom so this is very critical these are the support levels with support 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 you get the retracement the impulse the retracement the impulse or the swing low the swing high the swing low the swing high and you know you can actually fun fact guys you can actually get a slanted double bottom the neckline would have to be diagonal and then you'll get a Know, a double bottom like that so kind of like you know a saggy you know thingy majiggies pattern <laughs> so a double bottom is a bullish reversal pattern as it reflects the end of a downtrend the price would have been coming down do 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 you get the bottom so that's the the correction phase here you get the impulse you get the retracement and then you get the swing high break through the neckline of course we are retesting this level over and over again this is our resistance we break through flip it into support it looks really good so 70 percent of cases the movement is bullish after a double top in 67 percent of the cases the price objective is achieved which is where you measure the depth of this the neckline and you pull that over to here and that gives you the price target guys Cup and handle, this is another one that I really enjoy and I think you see a lot of these during bear phases and also at the beginning of bull markets. So the cup and handle is a bullish continuation pattern. It portrays a bearish market sentiment usually for a short time frame. And this cup supply zone for me indicates a reaccumulation area following a dip. And so following this, we usually get a nice pump to the upside. We create this handle and then we break through the descending channel and then we retest this neckline on the cup. So you get that neckline by drawing this high to this high of the cup. And then you go through and this is the key resistance right here. So when you break through, that's when we see a big price target. In 79% of the cases, the exit from a cup with a handle position is bullish. And 73% of the cases, we do achieve that price objective, which is measuring the depth of the cup and then adding that to the neckline. So really, really bullish pattern here, guys. A very nice one. Very easy to also identify. We have a rising wedge as well. This is an extremely bearish pattern. We recently had this with Phantom, Solana, and a few other coins. Sorry, quick sip of water. So this is a very bearish rising wedge pattern. We can see resistance and support lines are converging. That means these lines will eventually touch each other if they went on forever. We can see we're getting the highs coming lower and the, the lows also coming higher. Sorry, the highs are going higher, but the lows are coming higher too. So what we're getting is a steeper support line here. It means we're losing a bit of resistance. We're getting rollover on the resistance and the support is obviously getting weaker and weaker. Um, often this will signal to the trader that the price is about to you know, lose support deleteriously and it's gonna decline quite violently. These are very violent movements when they do happen, guys. Um, and where you would enter potentially is along the support line. As you lose the support, you wait for a retail and you go short with a stop loss on the inside of the support line back in the rising wedge. So often this signals, like I say, 
We were about to lose support. You gotta go short. <laughs> Usually there is a violent movement to the downside. So 82% of these cases are bearish. 55% of the cases of a rising wedge is a reversal pattern. So that's when we've had a bit of a, a nice pump and uptrend. You know, we're getting euphoric. The relative strength index is kicking over 70 and stuff. And then that's when we lose that support. And we potentially still put through a higher low, however, but we do lose the momentum for the short term of things. So 27% of these are also what you call like fake outs. And fake outs, if you ask a trader, this is where you come down. And then you actually come back into the rising wedge and continue the uptrend. So this is why you have to be very careful and not let emotions invalidate your logic or your sentiment, because we could have this great uptrend and then we could have this rising wedge position, which tells us, oh no, things are about to go bearish. But then actually we get this drop, the volatility is high, we recover really quickly and we go back in to the rising wedge and back into an uptrend. So that can happen also 27% of cases, very, very key that you understand that guys and then we have the you know the, the evil twin again the falling wedge we got the falling wedge and this is one of my favorite patterns guys due to its high propensity to break to the upside it's really really good for dollar cost average if you buy those support signs within the falling wedge so we can see here the resistance is steeper than the support they're converging lines you've got swing low swing high swing low swing high swing low and the highs are becoming lower and lower and the support is also becoming lower and lower as well. So this is the key resistance. And when you eventually break out the resistance, usually you get a nice price target up here. And that's measuring the, the width of the support and the resistance around the top. In most cases as well, of these particular patterns, you do break out to the upside before the two lines converge. So in conclusion, both rising and falling wedges are reversal patterns. 82% of the, you know, the falling wedge patterns the exit is bullish and that's a really really good odds to go long there guys 55 percent of cases a falling wedge is a reversal pattern which means you've been in a long-term downtrend and then suddenly you're getting that uptrend begin 63 percent of cases we hit a price objective flags guys flags bull flag the bull pennant you probably heard of these before it's our first example of a continuation pattern so if the trend prior to this was bullish we're getting the higher highs and the higher lows um, there's a really good chance that the price here where the two converging lines are on the pennant we're going to see another explosive move to the upside so almost like a symmetrical triangle really and you can see we get the swing high swing low swing high swing low resistance 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 support 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 and that's where you get the breakout to the upside so interestingly this means that actually this is also you know symmetrical pennants or bull flags bull pennants it's bullish or bearish which makes it a bilateral pattern because either thing could actually happen depending on the market activity prior to the flag formation or the pennant formation ascending triangles boom lovely pattern here guys the ascending triangle is a bullish continuation pattern these are drawn by connecting the resistance lines and support lines as you can see trend line along here trend line along here and the resistance must be horizontal in this situation you can't have a big volatile wick up here you can't have this wick down here it does need to be very textbook horizontal so to speak and the support is coming up so this tells us the support is getting stronger and stronger as you see, bulls are winning here. The resistance is staying the same and we're likely to see a break to the upside and the trend line reflects an overall uptrend of the market. In 62% of cases, the exit is bullish. As we see, we pump to the upside. 75% of cases is a continuation pattern. So prior to this, we would have had uptrend activity. 75% of the cases, the objective is also reached where you measure the the depth between the support and the resistance and then you add it to the resistance line which will give you that technical target the objective and where you think the price is going to go before taking potential profits we also have a descending triangle so this is our bearish continuation pattern here we see lower highs and horizontal support right here and yeah it looks just like that two lines that are converging usually the breakouts of the downside will happen before the lines converge you can see we're getting lower highs and the support remains the same we're retesting the support multiple times and this 
in effect that creates a weaker support you can then place a shorting position below this support line and a stop loss position just above it usually you want to wait for a retest as you see we come up and retest the support we get rejected and then we see continuation to the downside so in 54 percent of cases the exit is absolutely bearish in 61 percent of cases a descending triangle is a continuation pattern another one of my favorites here guys symmetrical triangle probably my favorite pattern because it's also bilateral and it's really really nice continuation pattern too either thing could happen depending on what happened before as you see in this particular instance we had a downtrend measure the flagpole this is what i like to call a flagpole we have the symmetrical triangle use that flagpole as an indicator of the price target we see the downtrend room you know resume here of course on the other hand we could have a flagpole on this side and then you would use the technical target on the right side where you have the uptrend and that gives you the uptrend target so very very important to keep an eye on both resistance and supports for this pattern because they could go either way um, if you're in a strong bull run prior to this pattern there's a good chance you're going to go long and if you're in a strong downtrend prior to this pattern there's a good chance you're going to go short so that's kind of how you can use it we can see 57 percent of the cases exit from a bearish symmetrical triangle and they are bearish and the vice versa 91 percent of cases the downward movement continues after exiting the triangle so yeah really really useful symmetrical triangles you can see them quite easily they're basically well triangles you get an increase on the the lows so the supports are going higher but the resistances are also coming lower and because we were in a downtrend beforehand you would expect that support to be lost another image here of symmetrical triangles just so you can kind of see what they look like you see you've got the resistance 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 support 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 and you just use a trend line tool and connect those up to create your triangle like i say 70 percent of these particular cases um the breakout occurs before the two lines finish converging and that's very important here it happened around the 80 percent mark and you know i would imagine that we're going to see a breakout to the upside just looking at what's going here with this particular pattern and of course you've got this wick here which is uh, demonstrating a lot of buying pressure. Look how slim the wick is to the downside. So that's a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you somewhat benefit from this very simple video. Anyone can benefit from this video of any level in the trading industry. If you do like this educational content, do please let me know down in the comments below what else you might like me to look at. Also subscribe if you're new. That would be really, really helpful for the channel to grow. You can use all of these chart patterns in your own trading and the objective is that once you start using them and seeing them, once you look at a different project or once you're looking at trading view, trading software, something as such, you will autonomously see these patterns and you'll be like, whoa, there's a double bottom there or there's a double top or there's a bull flag here or a symmetrical triangle. You will start to see these patterns naturally and it will become very automatic. Like I like to think it's quite a kinesthetic way of learning. You're actually doing, you're looking, you're trying to solve problems yourself. And it's very, very interesting to see. Uh, make sure you hop into the Discord channel down in the description below, guys. Subscribe, hit the like, leave a comment consider becoming a patron if you want to support the growth of the channel and also benefit from exclusive benefits that will you know help you in the the crypto long run and transform your journey so thanks again guys for checking out this video i hope it really helped there's 11 patterns that will really really help you in the trading cryptocurrency market so that's a wrap bye for now